Well hello everyone and welcome to the channel once again. Today's video we're going to talk about some basic computer science and we're going to talk about some basic math. Now don't worry if you've passed grade school math you'll be able to understand this just fine. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. So recently I've been trying to write a program for the Arduino board that will take a value in from an analog device like a temperature sensor and give back a reading on what the value actually is. The thing is though, once you take a value into the Arduino board, the Arduino board actually stores it as a binary value or a hexadecimal value. We need to convert this value into a decimal value so we can actually read the numbers. Now the way that I usually do this conversion is simply by dividing. For example, if we take the hexadecimal value FF, that has a decimal value of 255. In order to get FF into 255, the only thing that we really need to do is first divide it by hexadecimal 64. That's decimal 100. Now this gives us the first hundreds place decimal. All right. Then after that, all we would need to do is divide it by 0A which is hexadecimal 10. That would give us the tens place value. Now for the ones, we didn't need to do any division. So this is great. We would have the result that we wanted to see. In fact, I've done this before on several programs for a regular x86 CPU. There's only one problem. The Arduino board actually doesn't have any instructions that can tell the CPU to divide. Here's a list of the arithmetic operations instructions that are supported on the Arduino CPU, which is an AVR type CPU. You'll note we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, but division isn't anywhere to be found. And at this point you might be thinking, wait a minute, I've seen something that looks similar to this before. It's an easy way to do division on the Arduino board, and you're telling me that the Arduino board can't do division? Well, the truth is the hardware itself isn't actually doing it natively, if that makes any sense. An X86 CPU actually has a division instruction that you can just tell it to divide, but an Arduino CPU does not. What you're seeing here is actually some software tricks, and today I'm going to show you one of them. One method of division that software uses, like for the Arduino, is called division by subtraction. Now division by subtraction isn't really a conventional way that division is done, but it does work on computers. So here's how it works. Let's say you wanted to divide 100 by 50. Now we all know that the answer is 2, but bear with me. The first thing that you would do in division by subtraction is subtract 50 from 100. Now we all know the answer is 50, but you've taken 50 out of 100 one time and you have 50 left over, okay? Now, take what remains, take the 50 that remains, and take 50 out of it again, and the answer is zero. Now all we need to do is count how many times we took 50 out of 100, and the answer is two. We were able to take it out two times before we arrived at zero. So the answer is two. Okay, so what about long division? In this case, division by subtraction can do long division, and you know that the division will be long if the result after all the subtraction is greater than zero, but it's less than the denominator. So let's consider, for example, we wanted to divide 20 by seven. So we do the same process at first. We would do 20 minus seven, and it would be 13. So that's the first time we took seven out. Now we have 13 left over. We'll do 13 minus seven is six. So we were able to take seven out of 20 two times, and the answer is non-zero. After all the subtraction, the final answer is non-zero, so it's six. So six becomes the new numerator. So now the answer is two and six over seven. So the denominator stays the same, it's still seven. So if we want to divide it down further, the only thing that we really need to do is shift the decimal point to the right on the numerator. So now it's two and 60 over seven, and then we just repeat the same steps. Then we'll do 60 minus seven is 53, and then 53 minus seven, and so on and so on, and we'll count the number of steps, or how many times that we could take seven out of 60. Now, the answer here happens to be eight. So if we stop here, we come up with the answer of 2.8 and four over seven. But because it's long division, you can keep going as many digits as you want. All right, so let's say you actually want to make your Arduino do division. Now, if you're going to use the Arduino's integrated development environment, then you can just use a code like what you see here. But if you want to use assembly language or a different language on the Arduino that doesn't have a pre-built library for this, then this is the code that you'll have to use. All right, so this is the example code that I wrote, and hopefully I've commented this out a little bit better this time so you guys can follow along. So what we want to do is we want to divide FF by 64, or basically decimal 255 by decimal 100, and so we can get the right result to be printed on the screen if we are, you know, using an analog input device. So 
Step one, we can see here, the hexadecimal values are copied into the registers. So FF is going to be loaded into R18. And then re immediately after that, uh, 64 is going to be loaded into R17. So now we're on step two, and then we, we can see we have sub R18, R17. So what's gonna happen here is, 64 is going to be subtracted from FF, all right? Now immediately after this on step three, R16 is incremented. That means it goes up by one, all right? No, no matter what, anytime this program loop runs, R16 is gonna go up by one, okay? So now on step four, what happens is a comparison is made between 64 and whatever the result is in R18. So if we took 64 out of FF, we're left with something that is still larger than 64. So then we go down to the final step, which is branch same or higher again. So we'll go up again to the again label and we'll subtract again. We're going to subtract R17 from R18 again. So we're going to take 64 out of whatever remains. The counter is going to go up by one again. So now R16 is going to be at two. We'll make the comparison again and the CPU will say, okay, whatever is in R18 is actually less than 64. So we can go to the next routine and we can continue the division. Now at this point in the program, if you're actually running this, the first digit is in R16. So you'll take the value that's in R16 and you'll display that or you'll print that or you know whatever you want your program to do. And then the next routine, you'll just, it'll be the same thing except there'll be different values. This time R17, you probably want to load that with 0A, which is 10. And it'll do the same thing, then R16 will give you the next digit. Well, it's nice if it works in theory, but now we have to find out if this actually works in the real world. Now, I've written a more complete code that I'm going to load onto the Arduino board, and I'm going to use a potentiometer on the analog input, and I've also told the Arduino to display its values on a serial output. So we're gonna hook it up to the computer, and we're going to watch the serial monitor and see if we can get real decimal digits to come out and change when I change the potentiometer. Well, so we don't want hexadecimal. What we want to see is digits. All right, so let's find out. All right, so as you can see, I have the Arduino board. I have the potentiometer hooked up to it, and it's connected by a USB cable to the personal computer. Now, yeah, eventually I want to get this potentiometer changed out for a temperature sensor, but this will do for the demonstration. And as you can see, it says, yeah, the message does say exhaust gas temperature, but you can see the numbers. They are, in fact, decimal digits. They're not hexadecimal digits, and they are changing when I turn the potentiometer. So it does work. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. I hope I see you guys again soon. I'll be trying to make some more videos and hopefully more frequently. Uh, thank you guys once again for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, the information here is displayed right on the last slide. Thanks again, guys, for watching.